Hello, Fun Nation. My name is James, checking in here with team number 118, the Robonauts here at the first championship. This incredible team has done it again with a marvelous machine. Their white and gold masterpiece, Firefly, it can do every aspect of the game. It can pick up LG, it can pick up Coral, even perpendicular, it can place it all in every level. It's incredible. Their climb is fast. Their intake can pick up perpendicular Coral. They've won six blue banners, five district events in their field at district championships. Just simply incredible. To learn more with me, we have Jackie, Jonathan, Jath, Connor, Sadie, and Lauren. Let's find out so much more on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. All right, Jackie, we're going to start off with the intake. Can you tell me a little bit more about how you guys developed this intake? You're able to pick up perpendicular coral. love to learn more about that, as well as some of the different techniques you've used with belts. How do you discover that? Yeah, so um, if you notice on our reveal video, we didn't have this uh, vertical belt here. So um, this was a later addition after our drivers were struggling with uh, intaking perpendicular corals coming into our robot. So we added this active surface here, which is powered by this roller um, with a belt that does a, a loop uh, around and, uh, and a twist at a 90 degree. You notice uh, through this clear uh, piece here, it does a twist and then an upright 90. Um, so that that belt is powered. And then so when the coral comes in, um, it gets knocked sideways. Um, so then it's able to get intake further. And then through here, it gets, it hits, it hits this piece of cat tongue tape, very important. Um, and then these set of three rollers here and then get sent up to the intake like this. So, but um, in order to trough, these two sides are powered separately by motors that are within the chassis to keep the CG low. It is all the way down there, uh, belted with to this cluster pulley, and then to this big pulley here, and then to that pulley down here, and same on the other side. Um, with a little, little twist um, of this belt going up and then out, and then crisscross and then down, um, so that, that allows us to power this set of rollers with a motor that is uh, behind the sewer module in the chassis frame. Um, so that, that allows us to keep the CG low and get a weird angle that's not on the same plane and um, not on the same axis um, with a relatively low um, resistance. Um, and uh, yeah, so yeah, that's how we do our, our 90 degree turn, but they're separate motors so that we can do a hot dog. We, what we call on our team hot dog position. Um, so we do this this position and then they're spinning separately uh, in an opposite direction and then we pivot up here and then we spit out um, and then Connor here will talk about uh, the cycloidals we use for our pivots as well as our as our elevator stuff um, so yeah so we, we use our custom cycloidals hello I'm Connor uh, I'll share a little bit more about our lift and our cycloidal gearbox so starting with the lift right down here this is where the lift is actually driven from with a Kraken X44 uh, so that drives the lift going up and down. It's actually one stage, so we don't move the lift. Uh, stages one, two, or three, we only move the lift for stage four. Um, leading into the arm, the arm gearbox is stored uh, right here at the bottom of the carriage. The arm itself is about 50 to one. Uh, the cyclodals themselves are about 23 to one. So it's driven down here leading up this, to the cyclodal where we have a keyed shaft running through the cyclodal. So it looks a little bit like this. Uh, the pulley has an adapter in it to the keyed shaft, and then all the uh, end effector motors are actually stored down here as well, um, running the belts um, through the box tube up through here. And then this uh, 3D printed pulley here actually runs uh, mounted onto uh, the arm pivot as more of a dead axle. So once the elevator is down, uh, the highest motor on the robot is actually stored here on the climb. Um, and then I guess, yeah, leading into the arm, um, this is where either side of the uh, algae and or coral on the arm is driven and uh, Jonathan is going to talk uh, a little bit more about that. Okay, so now for the end effector, after Connor already explained how power gets transferred to the lift through, through the box tube, uh, the end effector gets transferred into this 
uh, middle area inside the sheet metal base, and we had to find out a way to get get two separate motor powers through this entire two inch gap. And we did this by creating two two C channels and basically splitting the shaft in the middle, so that two so that these both of these shafts are driven independently. The end effector uses a mixture of both uh, thin aluminum and polycarb just to keep everything overall lightweight. Uh, we use carbon fiber and extra C channels to kind of stiffen up the points where C channel flanges aren't present in our arm. And then coming up through the end effector, this motor runs our uh, entire coral system. It gets passed all the way to these two gears over here and this powers our internal coral gripper system. Uh, we are using X belts uh, uh, on our coral gripper system just because we're able to carve out a lot of this material right here. This really helps scoring on L4s because the coral can tip over the L4 branch and kind of score. So this gives some visual feedback for the drivers. This also helps load from the coral station during our autonomous routines just because the, uh, the coral end effector isn't at the same angle as the coral station is. And then now on the opposite side, we have our algae end effector. This one is geared three times more torque than the coral end effector through a gearbox in the carriage all the way down here. So this this powers, we have a pretty wide uh, algae end effector. We are using these cone wheels to help get more grip on the wall. These are printed with uh, Fibron carbon fiber filament. They have cat cat tongue grip tape over them just to give some more grip. And that cone conular surface gives more surface area to grip onto the ball. Another thing we feature on the end effector is these two little tongue tongue springs that we like to call them. And this really helps our this really helps our uh, barge scoring just because we're able to kind of dunk the ball over the barge because these two tongue sprungs react on the bar of the barge. And they that basically allows the end effector wheels to basically dunk the algae over the barge and that allows us to store a lot of algae into the barge. And then if Sadie wants to talk about the backside of a robot. Yeah, so leading from the end effector, I can kind of talk first about um, our algae ground intake. So this is the first competition we really heavily use the subsystem. Um, it is these two sets of rollers which pivot down and they actually hard stop against the bumper. And then we rotate them and the algae will wedge into these two 3D prints and then we'll rotate them back in the robot and the 3D print on the climb kind of acts as a ramp to get it up into our algae end effector to score either in the processor or in the barge. Um, what I think is really cool about this subsystem is how well we were able to do it in such a small space. So if you can see the climb goes directly through this subsystem and there were a few issues with that at first. Um, for instance, we've had to split this jack shaft in three in order to make um, this subsystem be able to be powered all the way across. Um, leading into our climb, our climb mechanism is in the center and uh, we've had a lot of iteration on this subsystem throughout the year and it's definitely gotten better. So how the climb works is there is a set of hooks and a standoff and as you rotate this gear, um, the hooks will unlatch from the standoff and then with torsion springs we'll pivot down and then the climb will set in these back set of hooks. Um, one really cool thing we've done with this climb is there are lots of magnets. So there's a set of magnets in the back which actually allows us to um, have some resistance initially when uh, we hit the climb. So when we want to climb on the cage, we want um, to be able to get into it, um, but we don't want our cage to initially swing back. We want some resistance so that we can get a better climb and we use magnets for that. And we also use magnets on our bottom wheels. This helps us catch a swinging cage. It was a, a cool find in a recent ad, um, probably around uh, week four or week three of our comp season. And that has really allowed us to speed up our climb a lot. If you look in the back here, we have um, two sets of limit switches and two sets of latches. So when the latches are closed, the limit switches are pressed, which also helps us to automate our climb and give um, some visual feedback as the lights will change colors when both of those have been pressed. I'm going to now hand it over to Lauren for, yeah. Before we hand it over, quick questions for you. So I want to talk a little bit more about kind of the, the iteration that sure. went in this climb, yeah. right? How did you guys find this design? Was it pretty early on or did you do a lot of prototyping? And then, so you mentioned like the magnets was a change. How else has this climb evolved throughout the season? Yeah, so this climb looks very different than what you'd see in our reveal video. Our initial um, climb had some uh, like fingers that come off the sides to help vector in. And originally it was um, pretty much all driver operated to climb. Um, we've since added, I said, the limit switches and the wheels, which act as a kind of intake for one of the climb corners. 
Um, through a lot of iteration, um, we've tested how we can um, speed it up. And originally, our driver had to run around the back side of the cage and come in through there. But um, software has really helped us speed up um, this climb with, um, again, visual cues for the driver and uh, automation. Jack can talk more about that as he gets into software. Awesome. Thank you, Sadie. So we're going to pass it now over to Lauren to talk about some custom circuit boards you guys have. Tell me a little bit more about that and what the advantage is for 118. Yeah, okay. So we have three custom circuit boards. The most unique one we have is the IPDU, Intelligent Power Distribution Unit. But we also have the Molex Rio hat and the CAN node. So this right here is our IPDU. It has six ICs on it, which gives us six channels and lets us power cycle devices in individually. And then it also has a 12 volt regulator. We use the 12 volt regulator to power our network switch and we have a specific port for our network switch. Uh, right here is our network switch. And then we also connect the two boards using uh, 20 pin headers and it gives us an additional 15 slots for a sense of power. We use it for our 12 volt low current devices. So that's the most unique thing we do electrically. We design it using Altium and we ordered it from JLC PCB. Um, this CAN node right here allows us to use star topology on our upper body. We use the Rio CAN bus. Uh, it's worked out really well for us. So, And then this gives us the Molex SL locking connectors. We standardize on Molex SL around our entire robot and it's worked out really well for us, all of these PCBs. I'm going to hand it over to Jath to talk about some software. So I think a big part of our success this year has just been our ability to drive really efficiently and make sure we do everything we want to do in a match. A big part of that is being able to switch to just a single driver system uh, from having a driver and operator in the past. And while we did retain the button pad for peripheral buttons and backup stuff, uh, now every, a lot of uh, sequences are automated and our driver can handle a lot of them pretty easily on a single controller. So like City mentioned earlier for our climb, one of the things that makes it so fast is our ability to latch in um, and climb in an automated sequence. So like she mentioned, there are two limit switches in the back here, and uh, they also give back driver feedback. So once you hit one of them, it'll go yellow, and then you hit both, you're fully latched in, it goes flashing green. But it also controls these wheels based on which limit switches are pressed. So when we hit the first one on the bottom, uh, they'll be spinning inward to suck it in. But once you hit that one, it'll start spinning outward. So it torques the cage inward, making sure it latches into the top properly. And at that point, the driver can see it. He's just full sticking it into the cage. And because the cage is attached, it'll pull the whole robot up. And once the gyro sees the robot tip up, it knows it's ready to climb, and it'll just go for it. So let's just get like, all he has to do is drive straight into it once it's deployed. And I can get us like three second climbs uh, if it really comes down to it. A lot of other subsystems on our robot are also automated in a similar fashion. For example, the, uh, the algae intake, one of the reasons it only was used so much uh, now at this competition is that it took a lot of time to dial in the sequence for that. Um, because it has to deploy the algae intake, spin the rollers, grab the algae, pull it in, pass it off, and then move it out of the way to prevent a collision and to prevent it from dropping the algae again. Um, and automating that sequence uh, required using a lot of sensors like the scan range and the end effector, as well as the current on the rollers here and here to see where is the algae and what sequence, what step in the sequence can we step to without dropping the algae. Um, our scoring sequence operates a lot of the same way, using the current in the end effector wheels on the other side to make sure we're holding the coil securely. Uh, but a big part of that is also our automated lineup sequence, which uses the two li uh, line lights here that face the reef on either side of our robot. Uh, we have placed them approximately six or seven inches from the center of the robot. So when we're scoring on a branch, the line light is perfectly centered on the tag and can uh, we, it allows us to see the displacement and auto-align to the center of the branch. Um, and once we align to it, it has, we have the option of auto-spitting or just a driver hitting a single button to spit it out. So all I have to do is hold the button when you can see the tag. It'll pull up, place the coral, and all I have to do is drive away afterwards. Uh, let's see. We also have um, an automated lineup on the station side, which also lets our autos be really consistent by letting us um, always line up to the same uh, slot on the the coral station and that's been really big in our autos we can speed them up as much as we want and not have to worry about slipping or being off place because it's just a single lineup and it uses the tag so it'll always be in the same location well team 118 the robonauts you guys are awesome this robot is incredible and you've really done an incredible job of engineering this robot right there's so much to learn from so much iteration so many, just so many incredible wins for you guys, right? So happy to see you guys doing incredible this year with an awesome robot. 
uh, six blue banners, hoping for more here at Championships. Best of luck, currently rank one here on the Milstein division. But thank you so much for taking the time to interview for us. My name is James for the Fun Robotics Network. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interests, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options through their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. So